journal. <laughs> Welcome to The Way Away. I am still in Italy and enjoying myself so much. I have now come to Florence and I am on a solo trip. So I thought I'd share with you what I get up to here in the city of Florence. I've been in the city for a couple days now and feel like I've gotten my bearings a little bit. I've had some delicious food. I have gone to a few of the museums, which you can't film in anyway. But I thought from now on, I would share with you what I get up to. Today, I've decided to come outside, just outside the city gates that you can see behind me and go to it through a beautiful garden and then up to one of the best views of the city of Florence. pond in the garden of little fish and they're all like around me <laughs> I love it I have nothing to give them it makes me feel wanted <laughs> in a weird way they're so cute living their lives here in Italy so cool afternoon I decided to come to Piazzale Michelangelo. Piazza Michelangelo. It's one of the most amazing views of the city of Florence. You could just see the whole city from one side of the river to the other. As well as there is a replica of Michelangelo's David here in the Piazza. If you're interested in seeing the actual David, like the real, genuine, original, it is actually here in Florence. It's in the museum called Galleria dell'Accademia. I accidentally ran into David the other day when I went to the museum. I had no idea it was there. I was shocked at the size and just how amazing it actually was. I was not expecting to see it and it was right in front of my face. I actually got really lucky because the first Sunday of every month the museums are free to go into and so I went to two of the biggest museums here in Florence. The Uffizi, Uffizi I think it's what it's called, as well as the Academia and both were such an amazing experience. Good morning! Welcome to my Airbnb. Uh, yesterday was a rainy day here in Florence, so most of my time was spent in my little Airbnb. Normally I showed you guys my Airbnbs when I check in, but I didn't get the chance to this time. So I thought while I check out, I would give you just a little bit of a room tour because it's just a room. <laughs> it actually worked out great. This neighborhood that I'm in is a very hip neighborhood. They have an amazing ice cream shop, which my host says is the best in Florence. And they also have a little sandwich shop where they make these focaccia sandwiches that are delicious, a great price, and they have like a little order window where I can just order it to go, which I've done a few times. <laughs> but yeah, let me show you around. I have all my stuff that I need to pack. There's a dresser full of my clothes that I need to get into two bags. I did it on the way here, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> it's definitely possible. So there's a bunk bed up here and a large bed here. Obviously I slept in the big bed. And then a little cupboard, a table where I have my coat, my laptop, and then a cute little kitchenette where I cooked some risotto the other night. It's just a fun little studio. It has literally everything I need. And I think it was around $50 a night. It was not that pricey. And then um, the bathroom is really cool. These tiles in here are really nice. So fresh, so bright. And the funny thing is, you have the toilet and the shower right there <laughs> up in the same space. So you could literally sit on the toilet while you're showering if you wanted. That's not something I did at all. <laughs> but yeah, and then a nice little fun painting. Like the guy that owns this Airbnb, he's a designer. So I think he did a really good job designing it. I have one hour to get all my things together in my bag and then I'm going to leave my things here for the day. While traveling, one of the more difficult things that is a part of travel is the timing of everything. Sometimes it can be really awkward. 
my flight tonight isn't until 9.45 to go back to Barcelona. So what do I do with my stuff all day? <laughs> That is like literally the hardest part. I have a backpacking backpack, which isn't that big of a deal, but I also have a roller bag, which means like if I wanna do a city tour, which I do this afternoon, I'd have to roll everything around with me. So I had to figure something out. Thankfully my Airbnb host said that I can keep my things here till two o'clock when he's done cleaning the apartment. But then I need to take my things to a luggage storage place, which my Airbnb host was nice enough to tell me about and is going to show me the way at two o'clock when I come and get my stuff. So that's my plan is this morning to go to a cafe, get some work done, read some books, after packing all my bags, leaving them here, and then I'm going to drop off my bags uh, at some luggage place and go on a city tour. That's the plan. And then I have to go to the airport, and then I'm flying to Barcelona tonight. So this is gonna be a long, long day. <laughs> Some people are team uh, packing cube and others are not team packing cube. I am 100% team packing cube. All of my items are in packing cubes <laughs> and I find it better because then I can fit things and know where they're at. I can organize them. Yeah, I prefer it. I fit these packing cubes though in this tiny little bag when this looks like it's the only thing it can actually fit in this bag. <laughs> Where I have to be a little more creative. The rest of the things that I have need to fit in this bag. Stuff it in the bottom. Okay, I am ready. All my bags are packed. <laughs> my two little bags there, and then I need to throw out some trash um, for my host who's gonna come clean it up, and I'm gonna head out into the city. I have my books that I wanna read in this little bag um, that I'm gonna carry around with me. And then when I come back, I will put them in my bag and go on a city tour, which is awesome. Yeah, chill afternoon, and it is sunny outside. That window is so cute. It's, the sun's just shining right in there, and I'm ready to get out there. Lovely. The girl said, I recognize you, but I don't remember your name, which is so cute. <laughs> I've made my home by getting a salad to enjoy. I got a pumpkin spice latte because tis the season. And I got a new book the other day, uh, Courage is Calling. So I'm going to start reading this. I actually started a little bit and so far it's pretty good. So I'm hoping that it's a really good read and maybe I'll be super, super courageous after I read it. That's the goal. <laughs> but I'm gonna eat my lunch, enjoy. I also have some patron postcards to write, uh, so I'll do that a little bit later. Uh, okay, left the cafe and I need to go grab my bags so that I can put them in a locker and chill for the rest of the day. This cafe is laptop friendly and when traveling, it is so important as someone who works for my laptop to find places like that. So on the weekdays, they don't mind that you use your laptop throughout the cafe and they have Wi-Fi, which isn't necessarily available in every cafe you go to here in Europe. So definitely pin it <laughs> the next time you're in Florence. Here. It is a luggage locker and it's not far from the Airbnb. I'm so excited that this is available to me because I was wondering when I had to check out of my Airbnb what I was going to do with my luggage for the rest of the day. This is super simple and easy. All I did was press that that I wanted to leave my luggage here 
it popped open one of the lockers, gave me this ticket, and now, in a couple hours, I can come and pick up my stuff by using the code. And then it's only, what, a euro 80 per hour? Which is amazing, it's so great. So this is definitely an option while you're traveling. If you have a flight that's later in the night, you can leave your things in luggage lockers and then come back and get them later at a very low charge, which is amazing. Like I've only used these things a few times, sometimes in train stations, but I didn't know that they were scattered throughout cities, which is super handy. So I'm gonna leave my bags here and I'm headed on a walking tour. So affordable. I also want to point out that they have Wi-Fi available, which is pretty cool. All these lockers. And these ones. started at the Medici Palace. The Medici family ruled over Florence for three centuries. Throughout the city you can find the Medici coat of arms. They have little balls on them and some of the different coat of arms have a different amount of balls but they're kind of fun to find throughout the city like a scavenger hunt almost. The tour guide did a great job of explaining that the Medici family understood the importance of art. And so they started collecting art in the city as well as commissioning it. And back in the day, I had no idea. Like, I was wondering why Florence was so big into the art. Back in the day, most people, they were illiterate. So writing anything on anything, nobody would know what it said. But if you used artwork to depict what you wanted to get across to the people, they all understood it, which is why there's so much art in medieval, medieval times because they just use that to communicate information, stories, um, religion to the people of the places that they lived. Yesterday I mentioned going to the museum where David is. Well, here in this tour I learned that Michelangelo was invited at the age of 14 because he was part of some school that the Medici started, was to live, like he was invited to live with the Medicis in their palace at 14. And from there he learned a lot more about art. He learned a lot of philosophy. The Medicis were very advanced for their time and they wanted to develop a place where smart people could come and be around each other and that's exactly what they did here in the city of Florence. I've literally enjoyed Florence to the very last minute but now I need to run and get my luggage and get myself to the airport to catch my flight. I've made it to the Florence airport and I'm happy to report that it was extremely easy to get from the city center to the airport. They have one little tram called the T2 that you can purchase a very cheap ticket for and it will take you directly to this cute tiny airport. I mean, when I say it's tiny, it's, it's so small and my flight is literally the last flight of the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed exploring Florence with me. I am so excited to go home to Barcelona, but I've had such a good time here in Italy. If you want to see more of my adventures, be sure to subscribe, leave me a comment down below, and like this video. I, yeah, have many adventures to come. I don't even know what the next ones are, but I promise that there'll be many, many more. <laughs> All right, have a good night, and I'm gonna get on my flight. Ciao.